All right, we're making feta today, and I'm gonna be doing a double batch, which is three and a half gallons, but a single batch of feta is about one and a half gallons, and it's a great cheese to do because it's simple. It doesn't need um, a press, and it's a pretty fast recipe. So my way that I like to start is I just capture the date, what type of cheese I'm making, how much milk I'm using. I'm using yesterday's milk and today's milk combined. And then I like to check the starting pH of my milk. And that's an optional step, but I like to do it um, with my pH meter after it's been calibrated in the two buffer solutions. And my starting pH of my milk is 6.6. .6. And then I write down what um, pHs I'm gonna capture during the making of the cheese. The next step is I sanitize all the equipment, all my molds, my whisk, um, measuring utensils, and then I fill up, and to, to sanitize, I fill up this big 20-quart um, pot with a bunch of water, bring it to a boil, put all my equipment in there, let it boil for about 10 minutes, set it all out, and I pour the boiling water into this canner that has the canning rack upside down in there. And then my milk that's in here, um, I take it and I put it inside this double boiler and I watch the temperature and stir it very gently, raise the temperature to 86 degrees. And usually it ends up being 90 degrees because I can never catch it at 86. And then we're going to add the cultures. Here are the ingredients that you're going to need as well as milk. You're going to need rennet to coagulate your milk. I really like animal rennet that's in a liquid form. You can also use vegetable rennet. And then this is optional. You need lipase powder. I really like this mild flavored lipase powder. Traditionally feta is made out of sheep or goat's milk or a combination of the two. And this helps it taste just like that. Um, and it's also really delicious. I know you'll like it. And then the culture that we use for feta is a mesophilic type 2 culture. The culture I like is just a direct set, which means I add this directly to my milk. The other two options that you have are you can use a mother culture mesophilic that you've created yourself and maybe have as like frozen ice cubes in the refrigerator or freezer. You need four ounces of mother culture, or if you're using this direct set powder, we're only going to use a fourth of a teaspoon. And then if you don't want to do either of those two things, you can also use cultured buttermilk. For feta, you can use a fourth a cup of cultured buttermilk for each one gallon of milk, which um, that's a it's a good way to do it, but it's kind of not fail safe. Sometimes it'll turn out, sometimes it won't. So that's why I do prefer a direct set mesophilic powder. And then this is optional as well, calcium chloride. Um, my milk is from a cow that's very late in lactation, so this will just help lower the pH and help the milk to set up better. All right, so I'm gonna add my mesophilic to culture. And you're gonna want a fourth of a teaspoon for one and a half gallons of milk. And I'm using a double batch, so I'm doing half a teaspoon. You just want to shake the culture powder on top of the milk and let it dissolve. Set your timer for five minutes before you stir it in. After the three minutes, then you're gonna stir your, your culture in. And you wanna do the 20-20 top bottom strokes which just means you're doing, you're turning the milk over and you're doing it like this, making a big O. And that makes it so the culture will completely combine and you're turning the milk over. Instead of doing like a swirl motion, that'll just combine the milk at the same level. So you wanna count to 20 and then once you get that combined, set a timer for 45 minutes and you're gonna let the culture have time to incubate. Let the milk hang out by itself, don't bother it and Put a top on to make sure no debris gets in. All right, if you're using cow's milk, this is where you'll add the lipase powder. I'm gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon of lipase powder. And then you're gonna continue adding the next step, which is I'm gonna use calcium chloride, which I use, um, you're gonna use half of a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in a fourth a cup of water. And then you want to mix that in well. 
And then you're going to use your rennet. You want to use half a teaspoon of liquid rennet diluted in a fourth of a cup of cool water. And you want to um, add your rennet to the water just before you pour it in because the water will deactivate it if you let it sit around. And then you want to stir in well but with the 20-20 strokes. And then you want to let your milk set uh, with a cover top for 30 to 45 minutes until the curd has formed. And once you finish stirring, you also you want to stop the milk from moving. I've not done this. Whenever I forget to do this, you'll see some really funny swirls in the milk. Um, so once you get to 20, you want to make sure to stop the milk before you wait your 30 minutes. So help the milk stop by just holding this in the middle. And then pull it out, set your timer for 30 minutes, and we'll come back and check to see if we have the curve has set up. So it's been 30 minutes, and I'm going to check for my clean break. And so I just insert my spatula in there, and look at that. That's definitely a clean break. So if you insert something in, you can bring it away, and you can tell that that line, it keeps its form. And then you could also go this direction and raise up, and you can see it just cracks evenly. So that's called a clean break. And now we're going to cut the curd. And you want to cut this curd into half-inch cubes. And you want to do a checkerboard pattern. So you do all the lines one direction, all the way to the bottom. And what cutting the curd does is it starts releasing the whey because you've got one solid curd right now. And then we're going to go this direction, I'm trying to get about half inch cubes. It won't be perfect. But you want to get all the way down to the bottom of your pot. And then this is optional, but um, so you have long strands going down, and to cut them off, you kind of do like this pattern, both directions. And then you want to let your curd heal. So t set your timer for five minutes, cover it, and then we'll come back and stir. All right, set your timer for 20 minutes. And you're going to stir the curd, and you want to maintain a temperature between 86 and 90 degrees. So you're probably just going to be keeping the same temperature. You won't be trying to raise it or lower it at all. Yeah, see we're still at, we're right at 86 degrees. And you want to be really gentle with the curds at this point. They're really fragile. All you're trying to do is break up these long parts here, and we're going to stir for about the size of a chickpea, being really gentle, raising up the ones on the bottom up to the top for 20 minutes. Okay, so now I have my basket molds, and I like these because they fit in to the other one when we do the draining and um, pressing of the cheese. You could also use, if you didn't want to buy these from the cheese making company, you could probably use spaghetti, a spaghetti, plastic spaghetti strainer and just sterilize it really good. So I have a bucket here to collect the whey. It's a two gallon bucket that I really like. And then I have my colander. And then I'm setting my little basket inside there. And then I'm just going to pour. Oh. All of the curds in there. This is your favorite part, isn't it? Here you go. You were asking for curds. All right, so fill the bucket with curds, and then you'll fill your next bucket with curds.
<laughs> and I have more curds. Um, this is about three and a half gallons of milk, so it's quite a bit of curds. And I like having the colander, under, colander underneath because if I miss any, I can just pour them in there. Next basket. Okay, so I have my cheeses stacked in here. I ended up with four of these um, containers. And the only weight that it needs is the weight of itself uh, and the cheese on top. And we're gonna set we're gonna strain these and let them drain for six to eight hours. Ooh. And during that time, we're gonna flip them um, a couple times to make sure that we get an even cheese. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna flip the cheeses and we're also gonna pour out the whey because as you can see, it accumulates quite a bit of whey in the bottom and you don't want it to sit in the whey because the whole goal is to drain out the whey. So to flip, I just turn it over like that and then set it back in the mold, just like that. It's a little bit tricky when the curd is so fragile. And then whatever these that were on the bottom are gonna become the top. So this one was on the bottom. So I'm gonna make sure that it goes on the top. And this is another bottom one. It's got like it's some weird edges, but when you flip it, it'll take care of that edge. And I'll probably flip these. This is our first flip. I'll probably do two or three flips, depending on how much time I have. So I'm going to pour out this way. Put them back in the pot. Put the lid back on to prevent prevent air, airborne particles and it also aids in um, keeping a humid environment so the cheese drains well. Alright this is the second foot. So this is what it looks like and you're just going to invert it top to bottom, bottom to top and then switch the, switch the order and then pour out the way. And you'll do this about several times or half a dozen times. Anywhere from like three to six times. All right, it's been six hours and the cheese is done draining. You could let it continue to drain overnight, um, but I'm going to take it out to, make, to have a moisture feta. Um, so as you can see, it's made a really nice um, shape here from turning it over. And then we're gonna take all of these cylinders and we're gonna put them in a brine. And the brine is so it salts the cheese and it also helps preserve the feta. drop them in there and you're gonna take this um, take this container and put it in your aging area um, you can uh, slice the feta it'll make really nice slices you can also crumble it you know it's really good like on salads delicious really good on pizza um, you know, eaten with crackers, you know, so many great ways to enjoy feta. And I hope you like it as much as we do. It's a really versatile cheese. It's very easy to make, um, and it's always turned out for me. Because since you don't need a hard press to make it, it's very simple, fast, um, and it's, you know, quick rewards. So one to two weeks after you make it, you can start eating it, and you can leave it in the brine up to a year and enjoy it any time in between that. Enjoy!